Today I'm going to build this storage chest made entirely of pine wood. It's large and spacious and has tons of storage for clothes, toys, blankets, or anything else you want. Alright, now that you know where we're going, let's start from the beginning. So while I start cutting up my parts, let me first mention that there are plans available for this build with all the dimensions and everything you'll need to build it, and you can find the link to those plans down in the description below. Using my miter saw and stop block, I cut up all the parts I'll need to make four panels for the frame. For this I'm using construction grade 1x4s. To assemble the frame, I'm going to use pocket holes. This is the Craig 720 Pro pocket hole jig, one of Craig's newer jigs. I love this pocket hole jig because everything you need is on board, including the hold down clamp, vacuum attachment, and all the bits you'll need, even the hex key. It actually has markings to help you pick out the right settings. Here it shows that my board is thick enough to use the 3 quarter inch setting, but it's borderline with the half inch mark. So while I could use the 3 quarter inch setting, I'm going to cheat just a little and set it up just about here so I don't run into any blowout with the screws. After that, using the jig is super easy. Just drop in the board and press down on the paddle. It auto adjusts to match the board's thickness. Another great feature. And by the way, this video is sponsored by Craig Tools, and right now they're having a sale on the 720 Pro and several other tools as well. Be sure to check out the link to the sale down in the description below and grab these deals while they last because the sale ends December 31st. After making pocket holes in all the board ends, it's time to switch bits and start on assembling the frame. I'm going to use all this lumber on my workbench as a stop and clamp down another board at 90 degrees to make assembly easier. I can then lay out the first panel and butt the boards up against my stops. It's important to note the orientation of the pocket holes here. The ones in the middle boards face up, but the ones on the top and bottom boards must face down. I'll explain why in just a bit. Alright, so once I've got everything lined up, I can clamp it down and assemble the panel using pocket screws. I'll then repeat the process to make the other panels, and just like that, we have four panels ready for assembly. But before we get to that, I'm going to give them a good sanding. Construction grade 1x4s are rough and uneven, but with a little elbow grease, they can feel nice and smooth. Okay, next I'll get to work on the legs, which are simply a couple pieces of 2x4 that I'll cut to length on the miter saw. I'll then start by squaring up one edge and ripping two square pieces from each 2x4. With the legs cut, it's time to assemble the frame, but first a word on pocket screw orientation. In a minute, you may wonder why I put the pocket holes on the inside of the chest rather than hiding them. The reason is that the pocket screws need enough material to bite into. Had I made them face the other way, the screw would go into the corner of the legs like this and really not have much to bite into and would easily break off the corner. That's why it's important to consider the orientation of your pocket holes. Trust me, I've made the mistake before. Okay, so I'll start by securing the legs to the short panels using the pocket holes you see here. Now like I mentioned, these need to face inside the chest and they need to be flush with the inside corner of the leg. So I'll just flip this over to start and flush up the legs with the panel at the top, then clamp it all together. I can then flip it over and secure the legs with pocket screws. To assemble the long sides, I'll use some 3 quarter inch plywood to prop up the panel to the right height. I can then position the side panels, flush them up at the top, and use a clamp to hold everything together while I secure the pocket screws. I'll then repeat the process for the opposite panel. And just like that, the frame is done. Like I mentioned before, some of the pocket holes are visible on the inside. Not the end of the world, but I do want to conceal them. One of the best options I've found is to use natural colored wood filler. I'll just fill the holes and use a putty knife to push it all in, making sure to overfill the holes. While I let that dry, I'll get to work on dressing up the frame with some tongue and groove paneling. The idea is to install the boards like this with the tongues facing upwards, but first I'll want to cut off the tongue from the very top board. To do this, I'll set my fence so it just skims off the tongue of the board. I'll first apply some glue and start from the top, working my way down. 
To temporarily secure the board, I'll use these little one-handed clamps that I got at Princess Auto. I can then secure the boards using brad nails. Then I'll just work my way down, inserting the tongue into the groove above it. With one side complete, I'll get to work on the next side, starting by removing the tongue from the top edge. And by the way, I'll leave links to all the tools I used down in the description below. By now the wood filler has dried, so I can just sand away the excess using my orbital sander. And voila! Once the storage chest is complete, they'll barely be noticeable at all. Okay, time to add a bottom to this trunk. I'll start by ripping two thin strips that will act as cleats to hold the bottom slats. I'll flip the chest over, making it a little easier to work. Then just as before, I'll add some glue and secure the cleats using brad nails. With both cleats installed, I can flip the chest upright and add a bead of glue to both cleats. Then just drop in the first board and push it into the corner. I'll then secure it with a few brad nails. This is probably one of the most satisfying parts of the build as the bottom comes together in no time. Just drop in a board, nail it, and repeat. When I reach the end, I'll measure the space and rip a thin strip from the remaining slot to fit that space. And just like that, my box has a bottom. It's time to move on to making the lid, and for this I'm going to use more tongue and groove paneling. I just love the look the paneling gives to this chest, and the V-groove makes it easier to assemble. I cut five pieces of the paneling, and I'll also need a few pieces of 1x3 to act as supports for the lid. Alright, so here I'm just laying out the panel for the lid, and getting a feel for what it'll look like. Now five panels is way too large for this lid, so I'll need to trim it to size. I'll trim a little off each end in order to make sure that my supports can be secured to each of the end boards. Alright, a quick dry fit to confirm that I have the right dimensions now, yep. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over to work from the bottom side so that the pattern will be on the top side. I marked the supports where I want to insert the screws and pre-drilled some pilot holes. Next, I'll apply some glue to all the grooves and lightly clamp the lid together, not too tight, otherwise it'll start to bow. Next, I'll add some glue to the supports and first position them on the markings I made and tack it down just so it won't move around on me while I drive in the screws. This should give the lid some rigidity and make it nice and solid. Awesome, I see that the lid fits nicely, so next I'm going to add these hinges. These are non-mortise hinges, which means I won't need to pull out the chisels. They're slim enough so that you can just screw them down. Of course, you can inset them if you want to, but you don't have to. I used a pair of combination squares to evenly position the hinges on both sides, then traced it out and marked the screw holes with a punch. I could then remove it and drill the pilot holes. Then reposition the hinge, and screw it down. Now, installing the hinge on the box is the easy part. For the lid, I'm going to use double-sided tape. I'm not sure if this will work, but let's give it a shot. I applied the tape only to the part of the hinge that will connect with the lid, then peeled off the backer. I'll then drop on the lid, making sure to position it just right with an even overhang on each side, and flush it with the back of the box, then press down. At this point, I can remove the pins from the hinges, and... Wow, it actually worked! So a few pilot holes, and a few screws, and I can pop the lid back into place, and reinstall the pins. And voila! Time for the finishing touches. Here I've got a small link chain, a couple screw eyes, and some quick links. And I'll use these as a stopping mechanism for the lid, so it holds open on its own. The first screw eye gets installed inside the box at the top, close to the back corner. The second one will go on the lid. 
I want it close to the other one without hitting it, so I'll make a small mark here and then transfer that marking to the lid, so I'll have an approx location for the other screw eye. Looking good, so next I can add the quick link, which opens and closes by twisting this little nut, so I can insert the chain. My chain is a bit long though, so I'll just use a pair of pliers to pry open one of the links and shorten the chain on this end and use the quick link to secure it. Perfect. Now this chest is pretty big and will require two people to carry it, especially when it's full. So I'm going to add these handles on each side, but I don't like how thin the walls are in this spot, so I think I'll add some reinforcement. I'll just glue and nail this extra piece of framing that'll give me a little more meat to screw the handle into. Once the handle is installed, this chest will now be complete. All right, so that's a wrap for this build, but let me know if you'd be interested in a part two video in which I go about picking a stain and a finish for both the outside and the inside of this chest. If that's something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments down below. And also be sure to check out the links in the description for links to all the tools and materials I use in this build and links to the build plans as well. Until next time, thanks for watching, happy holidays, and see you soon.